All right, guys, in this video, we're going to be creating our to do's API. Now we're going to use MongoDB, but we're going to use a remote instance of MongoDB using a service called MLab or formerly called MongoLab. And it's free. I mean, there, there are premium services, but there is a free account that's that'll suffice for what we're doing. So you want to go ahead and sign up and create an account here, MLab.com. I already have an account, so if I just go ahead to my dashboard, I do have one deployment, but we're going to ignore that. I'm going to create a new one. Now, what we want to do is we're going to keep the Amazon Web Services as the default provider, and then we're going to click Single Node, and you can see how expensive some of these can get. Uh, very expensive, but we're going to click Single Node and then Sandbox. That's the free account. All right, and then say database name. We'll say mean to do's. And that may be taken. Uh, the database name is not available. All right, so I guess it has to be unique. All right, so you can call it whatever you want. I'll just call it mean to do's Brad Dev. I doubt that's taken. <laughs> okay. So you'll see the little wrench icon. That means it's getting set up. Now it's a green check. That means it's all set to go. All right, so let's click on that. And the first thing we're going to have to do here is create a user. So if we click on users, say add database user. And I'm just going to use Brad for my username and password. Create. All right, so now we have a user. And notice up here we have our connect strings. This is how we would connect to the shell, but we want to connect using the driver. So we're going to grab this right here, copy it, and then let's go over to routes and then to do's.js. And we're first going to bring in Mongo.js. Okay, and then we're going to create a database object and we're going to set that equal to mongo.js and then we're going to paste in inside a set of quotes paste in what we copied from mlab all right and then just replace this db user with your username you created and then your password all right and then that stuff should be good now we want a collection to work with. So we're going to have a collection called to do's. So this takes in a second parameter, which is an array of the collections you want. So we're going to say to do's. All right. And that should be all set. Um, let's see. Should we let's go ahead and add the collection. I don't think we have to, but let's just do it just to make sure. We'll just say add collection to do's. All right, so we'll have a couple routes. We'll start with this one. This is basically just going to bring, uh, give us all the to do's in the database. So we're going to say db dot to do's dot find. And we're going to pass in here a function. And that function will take in an error and to do's or whatever you want to call that. And then we're going to first check for the error. OK, so if error, then we're going to just say res.send and send the error. If there isn't, then we're going to say res.json because we want to return JSON content and pass in to do's. All right, so let's go ahead and save that. And we're going to have to restart the server. And let's try to go to localhost 3000 slash API slash v1 slash to do's. Uh, let's see what happened here. Authentication failed. OK. So it's saying that our password failed. All right, so that's kind of weird. Let's uh, let's go to users. I'm just going to add another one, and let's say admin. Maybe I typed it in wrong or something, and then admin and admin. 
create. Okay, so now let's go back here and change this to admin. Admin. All right, so we'll try that. Node server, and let's go here and reload. Yeah, we still get authentication error. That's really strange. All right, so I'm going to just pause this for a second and see what's going on, and I'll be back. All right, guys, so I got it working. The issue is, I think, is this space right here is what was stopping me. All right, so I saved that, and now you can see I'm getting just uh, an empty array, which is exactly what I want because there's nothing there. All right, so if we want to go and create some to-dos through MLab, we can do that. So let's go collections, to-dos, and we'll say add document. And then in here, uh, let's see, we're going to have one called text. So we'll say text, and we'll say go food shopping. And it's also going to have is completed. All right, and let's see, that is going to be set to false. All right, so let's go ahead and say create and go back. Um, oh, you know what? I think we need to have double quotes around that as well as the keys. All right. Okay, so now you can see we have our text is completed, and we also have an, uh, an object ID in the underscore ID field. All right, let's go ahead and add another one. So we'll have text, and let's say meeting with client, and we'll set is completed to false. And open oh, quotes around that. Okay, so now if we go back to our API page and reload, you can see we're getting our data. All right, so we know that that's working. Now, next thing we want to do is we want to be able to get a single to do. So I'm going to copy, let me put a comment right here. We'll say get to do's, and then I'm going to copy this whole thing. And this will be get single to do so the URL here will be slash to do slash colon ID because that's going to be dynamic all right and then down here we're going to use find one instead of find and we want to pass in a set of curly braces here and let's see we'll put a space and then we'll do underscore ID and then mongojs dot object id and then pass in the request dot params dot id okay so that is what's going to be coming in from the url and then down here we just want to res json to do all right and that should also be singular to do so let's save that and we're going to restart the server Okay, and now let's see, we're going to grab one of these, we'll get this ID right here, and we're going to say slash to do, slash, and then that ID, and it gets us that single record. Okay, so that works. Now we also want to be able to save to do's. Now this is going to be a post request, and I'm not going to be able to test it right now. I mean, I could go find some kind of... Um, requester some kind of software that will make HTTP requests but we're just gonna test it in the next video alright so we'll just get it done now so save to do and this will be router dot post and let's see the URL will be slash to do and we'll say function okay same thing request response and next 
and we're going to be able to get the to do from the body. So we'll say var to do equals request dot body. That'll come from a form. And then we'll do some simple validation. We're going to say if not to do dot text uh, or not. And then I'm going to wrap this in parentheses to do dot is completed uh, is completed and then we're just going to concatenate just uh, empty quotes all right so if that is true then we're going to say res dot status and we're going to set it to a 400 status and then send along res dot json Okay, we'll throw in an object and we'll just say error invalid data. All right, and then we'll have an else. So if that goes okay, then we'll say db.save. And this is going to take in that to do and then a function. Okay, the function will take in error and result. And we're going to check for the error just like we did with these. I'm just going to copy that. Oops. All right, so check for the error. And then we'll say res.json and send in result. All right, so that should do it for the save. Now, the next thing we want is to update a to do. And what I'll do is just copy this. All right, now this is going to be a put request, okay, since we're updating data that's already there. So router.put and then to do slash colon ID. Now I realize that we have this URL here for the, the single to do's, but this is a get request. This is a put request. So you can have the same URL as long as it's a different type of request. All right, so we want to get the body, so we're going to leave that var to do. And we're also going to create a variable called uh, upd obj, so updated object. And we're just going to set that to an empty object for now. All right, and then we're going to just check to see if, uh, if it's completed. So let's see, we're going to... You know what, let's just get rid of all this. All right, so we'll say if, if to do dot is completed, then we want to set update object dot is completed to to do dot is completed. All right, just like that. And then let's check for the text. So if to do dot text, then we want to set that updated object dot text, set that to to do dot text. All right, and then down here we'll say if not updated, uh, well, if not updated object then we're going to send an error so res dot status will send 400 and then uh, same thing we did up here we'll just send this object with invalid data all right and then we're going to have an else so else we're going to call db dot to do's dot update Okay, and then first we'll throw in some curly braces and set the condition, which will be the ID to mongojs dot object ID, pass in the ID from the parameter. All right, and then we're going to put a comma here and then throw in that update object. And then we want just an empty set of curly braces and then the function. OK, 
Okay, and function will get error result. We'll check for the error. I'm just going to grab what we have here. Okay, we'll check for the error, send it if there is one. If not, then we're going to res.json result. All right, so that'll be the update. And then finally, we want the delete. So I'm going to copy the whole update. Okay, then we'll paste that in and we're going to change the put to a delete request, same URL to do ID. And then we want to get rid of this. We're actually going to get rid of all this. And that. Okay, this is going to be db.todos.remove, and we're going to match the ID, so that's correct. And let's see, we just want, we can get rid of this, and then this is just going to be a set of empty quotes. All right, and then we have our if error. If, the, if everything goes okay, we're just going to res.json result. All right, and that should do it. Now, like I said, we're not going to test this right now, uh, but let's just restart the server and make sure there's no errors. Okay, we can still get our object. All right, so that should be it for the back end. Okay, this is an, an actual complete RESTful API. So in the next video, we're going to start to set up Angular on the client side, and then we'll start to be able to uh, create a service that will interact with our backend API.